Welcome to episode 120 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and today we have special guest Amber Hurdle. She's a consultant, a speaker, uh, used to be a celebrity event planner, yes. But today we're going to talk about the fact that everything's changing on the people side of our businesses and leadership, but actually we should be leaning in to the things that are staying the same. We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. (laughs) Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. Okay, the moment of clarity this week is that you need to make change when things are most flexible. You don't want to make change when things are rigid because that's when things break. Right now, everything is flexible. Our expectations are flexible. The world is flexible. We're in a constant state of change. So if there are changes that you know you need to make, there is never a better time than right now when things are flexible. You don't change when things are rigid, then it's hard going, then things break, and there's a lot of tension and friction. You change when things are flexible. And the moment of clarity is, They're really, 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 really flexible right now. Now, we've had a lot of guests on the show. Uh, We talk about the people side of business a lot. You know me, I like to connect. I like to care about people's feelings and really craft um, how we can help people get what they want and in a way that can benefit a team so an organization or group can move forward. And I have to say that today's interview really leans in deep on that. We talk about the continuum of how you need to know what your people need so that you can help them, um, so that you can help them feel relaxed and feel like they're um, contributing, that their contribution is important, that they're thriving. I talk about thriving a lot. And so how we can help them thrive so that we can have an organization that thrives and grows and can in turn take care of them, but ultimately take care of customers who will drive the business and feel that energy and feel that passion and feel that you've solved their problem in a way that they feel great about and how that whole thing is a continuum that keeps looping and that it can't be broken. So it was really great to sit down and spend some time with Amber, who has sat down with countless executives and countless organizational leaders and consults on government and healthcare and all these, all these, you know, a vast variety of things to bring us this really unique perspective on what it is to pay attention to your team, to pay attention to body language in this Zoom and video world where we're not in person. And I think give some really practical tips on how we can take uh, a step forward as leaders, how we can take a step forward as members of teams in coaching and encouraging one another so that we can continue to do meaningful work in a way that moves our businesses and organizations and families forward. So I know you're going to enjoy this interview that I just was able to have with the one and only Amber Hurdle. Amber, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Given some of your time, I know you're kind of on Zoom call to Zoom call. Uh, Thanks for giving some time to me and the Clarity Compressed audience. Paul, I am so freaking excited to be on this call with you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You'll never see this, everyone else, but uh, we just went through like this whole tech debacle trying to make this work. So like, even though I didn't know Amber prior to this call, like we just went through that little that little struggle together. So we're good to go now. now. So um, a lot of people around the country are dealing with things in a different way. Like COVID's been rolling out. Everything that was like kind of the accepted norm has been blown up and things are different now. You're in Nashville, Tennessee. So I'd like to give people some perspective on what's happening around the country. Um, So what does life look like in Nashville? What state of open or closed are you? So we are pretty open. We are moving out of stage two. And in June, we are um, returning to familiar. I'd never want to use the word normal in light of this. For sure. Um, we graduated from takeout to um, it was the first order of business, especially in Nashville, which is a, a drinking town with a music problem was like, eh, you can deliver <laughs> beer now. It's fine. Right. Pick up margaritas. Absolutely. We're good. We're good. Y'all yeah. need this. That's fine. Um, but then they opened up to like half capacity. They started opening up the salons, but they had to be at a certain capacity with masks and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but we we're about to go to full capacity Um, we are in terms of restaurants, some of the, um, attractions are opening up. 
um, we are looking at um, pretty much getting the economy back in step. Yeah. Nashville's being more cautious because we are a, a hospitality centric sure. town. And so we need to, you know, protect. Um, so thanks for the update. Um, now you work with clients all over the country, so you're not limited to, you know, you, you're somebody that spends a lot of time on a plane, uh, you're a speaker, you're a consultant. So tell us uh, about your business a little bit. And then like, what has happened to your business as a result <laughs> of COVID? <laughs> Well, um, we were at the beach house, socially isolating, um, but just <laughs> overlooking the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, and within 48 hours, that was kind of the week that things started getting really weird. Mm -hmm. um, that was the last plane that I was on. And within 48 hours, my entire speaking calendar either was canceled or rescheduled to 2021. Mm -hmm. um, and so that you know, it doesn't scare me because my husband and I have multiple businesses. So, yeah. um, you know, we're good, but it was a shock. And then it was probably a good two weeks or so where, um, a lot of my consulting and coaching in, in organizations, not, you know, it was customer pay, uh, had to dry up because I do so much in hospitality and entertainment. And yep. as we all know, those industries are kicked in the teeth, right? Yeah. Now, last so. ones to come online for sure. Yeah. Um, and so that's just like, okay, cool. So I have a blank slate. I have uh, a white canvas, if you will. You don't get a lot of chances to kind of sit, step back from your ridiculously busy business. No, it's a once in a lifetime chance right here. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, I'm kind of like water. I'm just going to flow mm -hmm. and I'm going to mold and fit. And, and that's part of my personality. And so, um, back burner projects became front burner projects and I'm personally really happy with what I'm doing and, um, everything's remote. I'm set up remote. I have mm -hmm. all the whiz bang, you know, we have matching twinsy uh, mics and go. <laughs> I've got all the lighting. And so I don't look like a scary gremlin on video. So it's good. There you it's go. Good. Hey, not scary gremlins, a good way to be. <laughs> so like you have a ton of experience with the people side of business. So I want to talk about that a little bit. I think that um, the audience that watches this podcast are very people centered and people centric. They're either business leaders or they're growing a business um, or they're leading some sort of initiative. Um, so things, everything has changed, right? As for how we do things, how we meet on Zoom versus in person, what state of open we're in, uh, the fact that we can't plan more than four weeks, maybe even two weeks in advance because we don't need what know what the situation is going to be in two weeks from now. Um, so everything's changed in that standpoint, but there's still a lot of human interaction and connection going on all the time, but in a different way. Uh, my eight-year-old ran across the house the other day and she said, I'm going to be late for my Zoom meeting. Right? It's something I never thought I'd heard it might hear my eight year old say, but she said it because her and a number of her, her, you know, friends or classmates or whatever they were doing at the moment, they had a zoom call scheduled. So there's a different dynamic now, but we're still connecting. So what are some of the things that need to, we still need, even though we're not in person, like what's your perspective on person to person communication now that we're in this mode? I think in a team setting, it's critical that we we do honor the Zoom. I know we are all Zoom fatigued, but I would just encourage anyone to keep your video on, have that eye to eye contact, um, pick up on the um, on the different uh, cues that you get from body language. Eighty percent of how you communicate is body language. I'm Sicilian, so you can see my hands are constantly going. <laughs> if you tie your um, hands up, you can't speak anymore. I can't. I'm mute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and I think that you know, first understanding the what drives your individual team members and how they show up and if they're introverted or extroverted, if they, you know, are, are good with change or if they're sensitive to change, you know, just those different driving factors and how they show up at work, but also being able to pick up on little nuances on how they responded to some. Yep. Like give give us some did examples. Away did they blink a whole lot? I, I lost you for just a split second there. Can you just start over by saying like, uh, just talking about picking up on how they respond to things? Yeah. Um, so picking up on how your team responds to things, you know, the person who's going to have the dramatic eye roll, you need to see that, you know, yeah. the person who maybe might not speak up in a meeting because they're not necessarily, um, the type to push back, but you're going to see in their body language, if you say something and they shift back a little bit, 
Why did they shift back? Is it because they didn't like what you said? They disagree with you? Is it because they need to take a second to pause with it and you need to pause the meeting and give them time to digest that mm-hmm. because you know that they're the type of person who needs to have a little introspection before they have an opinion. Um, it could be that, um, your team is getting fidgety. They're done with the meeting. You can tell that they're like Facebooking on the side. Yep. Well, you need to cut your meetings down. You need to give some reprieve from the zoom fatigue. Mm-hmm. And those are all critical pieces to keeping your team engaged and also honoring who they are as individuals. So I think like some of the, the bite-sized chunks we can take from this, like you just talked about like someone who leans back. When I'm speaking with you and I can see because you're on Zoom and I say something and you lean back a little bit, what, is, what does that indicate to you? To me, I'm always going to pause there. So like as a coach, I'm, I'm going to say, let's just say I, I gave an opinion mm-hmm. or I uh, regurgitated back what you said to me. And you lean back just a tiny little bit. I'm going to say like, oh, okay, well, what did that do just then? What, what did that trigger? Mm -hmm. Oh, nothing. No, let's go there. Let's, let's talk about it. Something triggered you there. What is it that I said that made you lean back? Oh, you notice I leaned back. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'm not comfortable with that word. Are you not comfortable with that word? And and this is a coaching conversation. You wouldn't right. have this like in a group meeting. Right. But are you not comfortable with that word because it doesn't feel right? It doesn't resonate with you? Are you uncomfortable with that word because that's the truth? Right. And so and, so like what you're saying, like that's a coaching conversation. Yes. But if I'm leading a team Zoom, maybe there's two people on there. Maybe there's 10. Um, what the, the, what you're saying is like I can now kind of get a, a quick inventory just based on body language, like how is this being received? Um, if people are leaning back or shuffling or doing the eye roll right now without saying anything else, I can have kind of a quick litmus test on, you know, what's going on based on what I'm saying and what I'm watching is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. And also just people's enthusiasm level. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to have bad days and good days and you're going to have people who are, are great at 10 a.m. and other people who are better at 3 p.m. And so you're going to have those dynamics, but that's also going to inform. That's all data. That's all stuff that you can collect. And then that can inform how you do things in the future. And it's a little more telling when everybody's like Brady Bunch style on your screen, as opposed to in a room where you're not really as engaged into exactly that little square of what's going on. That's one thing that I initially really liked about Zooming. Um, You know, I went through that whole thing of like where I was, you know, really bummed that we had to be on Zoom because I love the team dynamic in person. Like we got a lot done, especially as a creative agency. Like you really thrive off that interaction. The best ideas come from that and interaction. So we're on Zoom and I'm bummed. And then like I realized, hey, it's really great being able to see everybody's face. So um, you're a coach. You consult in a lot of different industries. How can people be encouraging their people. Like, I think you just gave us a really practical piece of advice that I don't want to go past because I think everybody here and everybody listening can implement this, whether you're in charge or you're just part of a team. You said like, look, after the call, here's some things you can do to begin to spread, you know, like to share how you're feeling, share an insight and an encouragement or maybe a correction without it feeling like a correction. So one of the things you said, like, Hey, I really appreciate your energy on the call. That's like, verbally rewarding the good behavior so we can celebrate that and have them do it more like what what are some things how how would you suggest handling people that maybe you're having a difficult time and you can tell they're having a difficult time and the team knows they're having a difficult time because of their body language and you know what what are some practical things that that you would advise your clients to do so we can maybe uh get some free consulting (laughs) and uh, (laughs) um well played. Uh, in in great times, when you're winning and everything's going right, in bad times, in change, and um, in in chaos and crisis, there there's still one thing that every single human that is a part of your human capital needs to experience, and that is understanding where their value fits into the big picture. And so, if if I understand that the gifts and the talents that I was innately born with, that I have cultivated, that I have educated, that I have rehearsed over and over again through experience. Mm -hmm. If I understand that those things are moving us towards a collective good or a collective goal, um, then I feel like I'm showing up every day with a purpose. Mm -hmm. But if I'm showing up every day and I don't get why I'm even here, then the bad times get real bad. So communication is key. 
Um, transparency right now is critical. The companies where the CEO is getting on in his ball cap in his backyard and having just kind of like a fireside chat type experience with his teams, mm-hmm. um, he's winning. Mm-hmm. The CEOs who are too good for that or they need a high production studio in order to feel like, you know, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Right. It's befitting a CEO, right? They're losing. Yes. They sure don't know how their contributions fit into the grand scheme of things. And so when you think about how scary everything is, Mm -hmm. people don't know if they're going to have their jobs or maybe they don't know when their 100 hour work weeks are going to end. There's a lot of uncertainty going on right now. So if I'm already existing in a world of uncertainty and then I'm uncertain of how I even fit in, Mm -hmm. you're screwed. You're, you are not moving that boat in the same direction with everybody paddling in the same direction. You know, I think that's a, that insight right there. Like I can even look at my organization and I realize that the agency that we were, I've been saying like, Hey, whatever business you had going into this, just adopt the fact that it is not going to be the same business that comes out of it. Um, and, and like, I'm even seeing indicators of that now, like we're getting a little bar- battle weary, you know, yeah. we've been trying to, a lot of ways maintain what we were doing, but just remotely, but that doesn't work because what we were doing was designed to be in person. Right. Yeah. So, so that's exhausting. And then like trying to figure out like, well, what value do we bring to the clients now? Like, in a site inside our agency, we, we've really great high end creative, right? So it was really the jaw dropping type stuff, but it's really difficult to produce now, right? When we're remote you look at even shows like American Idol and the felt, right? Everyone's shooting on iPhones and like the fact that your video was amazing and the pre-production was amazing. Like that Nobody just cares. takes a back seat right now. So now it's like this thinking, but that was a big part of our identity as an agency. Um, and so so I think that that's a really important point. I think a lot of people that are watching and listening probably feeling the same way. Like there's a sense of maybe a sense of grief and loss over like, mm-hmm. but it's because our identity was wrapped up in like what we had built, what we had done. And if we try to carry that forward, like maybe there is this sense of, especially if you have an organization, like what am I doing here? What are we doing as a company? Right. The vision that you had and maybe was a good, solid, successful vision going into it has absolutely shifted, or at least it needs to be recontextualized. So you're saying people who sense that value, then it's going to get real bad for them. Yeah, because nobody jumps up out of bed every morning and goes, I can't wait to fulfill the mission and vision and 2020 (laughs) operational goals of fill in the blank of your company name. Like ain't nobody doing that. If they say that they are lying. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Unless you own the company or you're like a highly paid board member. Um, (laughs) the, the reality is they get up and they have their own needs that they're trying to meet. They want to, you know, pay for their son's softball or, or baseball, or they want to go on vacation whenever we're allowed to do that again. Yep. They want to put a roof over their heads. And so they have all these gifts and, and their experience and they bring that to the table mm-hmm. and your, your work family is a good fit for them. That's mm-hmm. a good family. You have good family rules. They like what your mission is. And so they're going to apply all of that to that. Yep in order to fulfill their own needs. So it has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. So what we have to understand as leaders is first I have to be self-aware because when I'm self-aware and I know what I bring to the table, that enables me to then start seeing in other people. And so now I can see and harvest the greatness in others. Once I can do that, now I know how to communicate with those people because I'm doing it in a way that is meaningful to them, not how I want to be communicated to I'm going to use my natural tendencies, but in a way that affords them the ability to understand and communicate back to me. And once I know how to communicate with people, then I can engage them. I can rally the troops. I can get them excited about what it is that they're doing. And when I know that I have them engaged, then I move them down to um, my ability to influence. So there's all these little pieces of the pie with, you know, there's some other things in there too, like creating environments. We are all creating new environments. Mm -hmm. We are all learning how to Zoom. (laughs) We are all learning how to run a meeting virtually. Virtually right. and, and that sort of thing. But those are those are the key success factors of what I would call a velvet machete leader, somebody mm-hmm. who can shoot you straight, somebody who's going to get to the point, who's going to keep your attention on a Zoom call. Um, but they're going to do it in a way that's appealing to you, to the audience, to the unique individual or the unique situation or the unique group. I think the core principle in what you just said. So I think anybody that pays attention to leadership, Right. Is going to say like, hey, I need to know what's important to the people that I'm leading so that I can contextualize what we're doing together to help them get that and help the group 
get what the group needs to get. So let me ask you one final question um, on that. So I think that this would be a logical conclusion. Everyone has crafted a team that they thought was a good team or at least mostly a good team. But now we're in a situation where the needs are changing. And so how, how should leaders approach the team that they need like now and in the future? Because the needs definitely have shifted. Um, how, how would you approach that or consult somebody to approach that in a way that honors the team that you have, but also honors the fact that you need a business that is, is geared to, to thrive in the next, the next iteration? Yeah, you need to take inventory of your talent. So in light of the fact that our business strategy has shifted from this to this, mm -hmm. now perhaps we need not as many um, people who can sustain change by creating processes and that sort of thing. Maybe we need more people who are creators of change or are comfortable with change. Maybe we need less people who are the rule followers that dot every I and cross every T. Maybe we need more nimble people who won't freak out that things are changing every two weeks. Um, it might be that we need less social people. We need more authoritative people. Like there's different pieces of, of what drives behavior in the workforce that I would look at to evaluate based on this new strategy and the roles that these existing roles have shifted into, what does that look like? Yep. And it might be that we have to carve part of Bob's job description off and give it to Holly mm -hmm. because Holly is more suited for that kind of work. And so that cross training is going to be an important piece. So what you're saying is it could really be partially a retooling of the roles and responsibilities of the people on your team. So like Bob, all of a sudden, you know, Bob did all of this, but we actually need Susie to do this part because it's going to require a lot more pivoting. And Bob is a high C personality. So he's going to freak out as soon as the second we start breaking the, the to do list or the order of operations. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly right. And it's not going to be serving really anybody well. Like Bob's going to be miserable. Susie's going to be miserable. The company's going to be losing. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a great way to end. Amber, thank you so much for spending time and sharing those insights. There is like a, there are a thousand things in there that we can implement in real practical. So I hope that people get some perspective. I know they will get some perspective for what you just shed a little light on for us on the people side of the business. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm wishing you and your family the best. You too. So there you have it. I was busy with this marker taking notes all over this desk. You probably saw me doing it because I thought a lot of what Amber said was insightful and sparked some things in my mind that I need to get moving on inside my agency congruent as we retool and we reimagine what it is that we're supposed to be. Anyone that's running a business or in a business or works in a business, whatever, you have to understand this one thing. The business you went into the COVID situation with will not be the business that you exit with. And there's a very unique opportunity right now where you either have to reinvent and reimagine, or you're just going to lose and probably be out of business. So you can't be so romantic about the past that you cannot change into the future. I'm not saying that the elements of your brand and the elements of what you had weren't good. You just have to retool them for the way forward. And that means your people, that means your processes, that means your products, all of those things have to be retooled. So I hope Hope you came away from this interview with as many notes and executables as I did, because I have a lot of work to do. And as much as I think that I'm ahead of the curve on this, it always takes it. Sometimes it just takes a little outside perspective to help you realize some things that maybe you didn't think of. So um, thanks for spending some time, whether you're listening or watching or catching this later on social media. I hope that you'll stay connected with me on social media um, because I'm there a lot. I answer my DMs. Uh, this is a Zoom, social media, Skype podcast world now. So I try to be there. I'm seeing that you're there. Let's be connected on the platform so that we can make some meaningful change together. Until then, I'll see you next week. Pursue clarity. Yeah.